ZA 2013-3376-CDP-CDB-SPP-1A, sequin number ENV 2013-3377-MND. Uh, the location is 320 East Sunset Avenue. Now before we uh, dive into this particular item, uh, we have had a request uh, for continuance uh, by the applicant. Um, uh, that's that's one aspect here, and I want to put on the record that we there have been other communications, um, both to uh, the commission and uh, actually the commission. I, I received them as, as president of the commission. Um, we received a communication from the Department of Planning, indicating that the zoning administrator for this particular matter, uh, Maya Zayatsevsky, cannot attend due to a uh, a family emergency. Um, and so planning is, and we've also received a, a, an email from planning uh, from uh, uh, Lynn Wyatt, um, chief uh, zoning administrator, uh, supporting a, a continuance to a date certain not exceeding 60 days from today's date. And that was uh, uh, by email um, on uh, November 18, which is today. Uh, we also received, um, a uh, communication from uh, um, Maya Zayatsevsky also indicated, uh, provided the November 13 letter from the applicant's attorney requesting that the uh, APC continue the matter um, to allow time to revise and recirculate for public review of the mitigated ne negative declaration. Um, so I, I, having received these uh, communications, I have discussed with the city attorney and, and the city attorney's office has no objection to a continuance for the purpose of recirculating a revised MND. Uh, I will disclose uh, that uh, I spoke with uh, Planning Director Tricia Keene for Council District 11 today um, and uh, to ask her to find out how the council district was going to perceive this continuance. Um, and Ms. Keene expressed some concern that the continuance might be a tactical move of some sort. Uh, but And also Ms. Keene reiterated uh, Council Member bon Bonin's position of grave concern regarding the continued code and statute violations in the present operation of the Justa Bakery, which is at 320 East Sunset. So I did want to disclose my uh, conversation uh, with the Council Office uh, regarding uh, that matter. I do want to also disclose a couple other matters on this. Um, in uh, October, hang on a second while I sort through some of this paperwork. On October 19, I sent an email to uh, the uh, um, Commission Executive Assistant uh, James Williams requesting, uh, uh, after receiving some of the materials on this continued matter, requesting uh, uh, reports of uh, violations uh, and complaints re reported to uh, Department of Building and Safety for 320 Sunset Avenue and also in the applicant's other business located at 1429 Abbott Kinney Boulevard. Uh, and uh, I also requested um, uh, that the commission uh, staff uh, contact uh, both DBS for that information, also contact LAPD to request uh, that information as well. Complaints for service to LAPD at these two locations. Uh, the reason why I made that request was because um, the appellants in this matter have raised the issue of the applicant's track record at these addresses as a, uh, evidence that uh, he's somehow untrustworthy and may not comply with conditions that were imposed in the present matter. And also um, because the, uh, the applicant has brought people into these saying basically that there are no problems at this location, at the other location, raising the issue of whether or not um, these matters should be looked into further. Uh, secondly, the uh, zoning administrator in part of her findings stated that the applicant's active ABC license in good standing is evidence that the applicant is a responsible retailer of alcoholic beverages. Therefore, I uh, determined that it, it is possible that the applicant's record at this location and other nearby location is at issue in the present matter regarding the issuance of a, a conditional use permit for the service of alcohol. 
Uh, I did not receive a reply to my uh, October 19 email, and so I um, sent another email out, uh, I think uh, just a couple days ago, and uh, I, in response to that email, I have received a response from uh, uh, Lynn Wyatt, um, the uh, chief zoning administrator, and she indicates that the LAPD information is under the authority of the LAPD, and that the APC can submit an inquiry to the LAPD, and also in the same way, uh, the Department of Building and Safety, their information is under their authority, and we can submit an inquiry to them. And then also, uh, it was in, she indicated that the requested records are outside the scope of the immediate case and review conducted by the Office of Zoning Administrator uh, regarding this matter. Um, and so I, uh, I do want to um, make a couple points regarding that. Um, first of all, the relevancy of the appellant's, uh, applicant's past track record is at issue in this matter. Again, as I stated before, um, the appellants have raised this issue of the track record at both uh, addresses operated by the applicant uh, as evidence that he may not comply with the conditions that may be imposed on in the present matter. Uh, the applicant, in turn, has presented a testimony from supporters from the operation of Juice to Bakery and his other restaurant as being exemplary and presenting no substantial pro problems or issues. Again, the uh, zoning administrator, as part of her findings, stated that the uh, applicant's act of ABC licensing good standing is evidence that the applicant is a responsible retailer of alcoholic beverages. And finally, uh, CD11 has expressed concerns about the uh, bakery's adverse impacts on the neighborhood and its failure to comply with statutes and regu regulations. All those, all that says to me that there is, is an issue here. I don't know whether the information that we might get from LAPD or Department of Building Safety is relevant, but that's something we would determine after we see it. Um, Los Angeles Municipal Code Section 12.24W requires findings to be made that one, that the proposed use will not adversely affect the welfare of the community. Uh, two, that granting the application will not result in an undue concentration of premises selling alcohol, giving consideration to whether nuisance proceedings have been initiated for any use in the area. And, uh, and number three, that the uh, findings should include that the proposed use will not detrimentally affect nearby residents, again, giving consideration to other similar uses and other establishments selling alcohol. So. Um, Essentially, it is my opinion that not only should I, we should not have to ask for this information, I think that planning should be getting this information before a ZA actually issues any determination. Um, whether or not it's relevant is, 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 is still an issue. It's not for uh, the, the planning office to decide what's relevant ever, evidence in a matter or what evidence is outside the scope of a matter before the APC. Planning can render an opinion, city attorney can render an opinion, anybody who steps up to that mic can, can render an opinion, but at the end of the day, this commission is the trier of fact. We decide what's relevant, and if so, well, how much weight we want to give to it. We can't do that if we don't see all the information. So I, I wanted to, uh, to lay that all out there under full, full disclosure so that um, uh, everyone has, has, is able to know what's been going on. Finally, I do want to bring up one last uh, item on this, and that is um, it often planning does look at these matters before it issues CUBs, and, and it certainly when it does when they renew uh, CUBs on restaurants. Uh, I looked at my notes, and I, and I looked at some of the records that I still had, and, and on June 19, 2013, um, this planning commission that I was on took an action regarding the Rose Cafe at 220 East Rose Avenue. And in the findings that were on file now, it says, the, uh, under number two, the use will not be materially detrimental to the character of the development in the immediate neighborhood. And then under that it says, the restaurant has an established positive operational history. And uh, no mandatory plan approval is, is required given the history of the operation and the known entity. And uh, finally, it says the grant for the sale of a full line of alcohol is authorized for a term of seven years. And then it says further, if the operation has been conducted appropriately and without creating problems, then a subsequent decision on a continuation of the request may take that into favorable consideration. A record of poor compliance and or nuisance complaints would allow the city the discretion to not grant the continuation of the, of the entitlement and thus avoid the need to proceed with prolonged nuisance, nuisance abatement 
and then con and th thus is conditioned the use is anticipated to be compatible with the surrounding area. If the APC is allowed to consider a restaurant's track record in renewing a grant for the sale of alcohol, then surely it could consider an applicant's track record when awarding the initial grant. It seems logical to me, and that's, you know, other reasonable minds may differ, but that's, that's, that's my particular opinion. So, with regard to um, uh, planning's indication that somehow we, um, we did not formally request this. I, I will note that my uh, emails requesting this information were directed to our commission assistant. Um, they weren't on uh, uh, parchment scrolls, but they were formal as far as I was concerned. And uh, I will ask at this point for the rest of this commission to endorse my request for this information so that it is very clear that this is what this commission wants to see. Uh, Commissioner Halper, uh, I don't know what form it would take, but I would like to uh, indicate my full support of your position. Is there any dissenting commissioners? No, and I would ask, um, I'm still, we, for the benefit of, of people here for the public meeting, we are in the process of transition to electronic records and tests and, and other documents. So there's a little bit of, um, I mean, and, and when you send us information uh, shortly before the meeting, we rely on electronic communications to review some of it unless there's a copy provided here. Um, I wanted to find out if we have actually received the acoustical study for this project that is mentioned in the project documents. Has that been provided to the APC for review? I am not familiar with the, the case file, so I don't know if it has come into the case file. And the and I don't know if James, if you have received anything. James Williams, City Planning. I'm not certain. Okay, uh, I would. I'd so like I would to just to add that to Commissioner Donovan's uh, request for information to add to make sure that we have a copy of the acoustical study for the outdoor the roof the proposed roofing of the outdoor patio. Add it. And the other thing I would like to note before we go further in, into this is that. Clearly, the LAPD records and the Department of Building Safety records uh, could be the subject of a public records request by anybody in this room who wants to make it. So it's not just me that has to go and get that, try to get that information. It's not just this commission that has to do that either. So I'm just laying that out there for everybody's edification. Okay, at this point, we're going to get into um, the motion to continue this, or the request by the uh, uh, applicant to continue this. And so we're gonna take some limited qu uh, testimony uh, from uh, the applicant and the appellant and, uh, and the council office at this point to find out uh, uh, the positions on this so they're on the record. And um, so I, we'll, we'll go to the speaker cards in a minute. If the, if the matter gets continued uh, for the variety of reasons that we have been expressed, which includes the absence of our ZA, which includes the absence of certain information that we've requested and all, the, all that, um, we won't have to have the regular hearing. So we're going we're to start out with the, the issue of continuance only, and I would la ask the applicant or the applicant's representative to step forward and tell us exactly why uh, you need a continuance. Thank you, President Donovan and honorable commissioners. My name is RJ Comer on behalf of the applicant. Um, one of the things that's raised in this appeal is that there are pieces of this site plan that have been changed uh, up to uh, the time that the approval was made. And uh, there are some proposals to change the site plan yet again. And the MND doesn't incorporate many of those elements. Now, many of those changes are for the benefit of the community and reduce environmental impacts. But the community also has a right to review those impacts within a CEQA context. And I'll give you a couple of those items. Uh, first, the, the CEQA document that's before you today doesn't really talk about parking. Parking's a big issue in this case. It doesn't talk about the use of the lot adjacent, which is part of this lot now. They're tied together now. There was a confusion about them being tied together before, and that's part of the parking plan. Doesn't talk about the option to exit out the alley uh, as part of the circulation plan. Um, this commission can decide whether to allow exit out the alley or not, but there's no secret document to discuss the potential uh, consequences of that. Uh, our applicant would like to propose the patio be enclosed. 
uh, which would definitely reduce noise, but of course it might be an aesthetic impact that needs to be studied. All of these things are responsive to the community's concerns, and a primary thrust of the appeal was about CEQA, and this is in response to that appeal. And if you're taking a careful look at the CEQA document, the project has changed a lot in good ways since that document was, was adopted, and, I, and we hold that the best CEQA document for this commission to review and to decide upon is a document that incorporates all those changes. The zoning administrator agrees. Uh, in fact, the zoning administrator, when approving this project, had a site plan that they had to write up and mark up by hand, something I've never seen in 20 years of practice. And that's a good, that's a good piece of evidence that really what we need to do is repackage this MND, get a, a static site plan that is not changed, that is represents all of the proposals, and bring it before you so that you don't have to, oh, well, there's a piece here and there's a piece here, and how does that all come together? In addition to that, the absence of the ZA, I think, is very important. And we're, the, the, the fundamental question before this body tonight is whether the ZA erred or abused her discretion in granting this approval, and she's not here to discuss that. And unless, unless I'm incorrect, there's no staff member from planning that's so familiar with the case that can talk about the case. Finally, uh, President Donovan, your request for information, without opining as to whether they're relevant or not, I'm not going to enter that fray unnecessarily, but what I am going to say, if you think they're relevant to your decision, then and your and your colleagues apparently agree, then all the more reason to get that information. Now, what I can tell you tonight is that the LAPD initially opposed this project and has recently written a letter recanting that opposition and now supports the CUB. But your inquiry goes beyond just whether LAPD supports. You want to see some statistics. We have some of those statistics. We can present them to you tonight, but. My understanding is you would like to review them and know them and then have a hearing. So for all of those reasons, and, and last, one last thing, there was an uh, allegation made that this might be some kind of, of strategy. It's not. Uh, an applicant that's been in the process this long, the last thing they want to do is have to go back and do something over and take more time. Um, but this is the right thing to do. Uh, this is the right thing to make this MND comply with CEQA in the best way to a, approach and, and adopt the very policies that CEQA uh, encourages and not only encourages but requires. And for that reason, we request the continuance. We will be diligent in getting this uh, MND revised, and not only revised, but recirculated for public review and comment, and that's key. Uh, so that when we come back here, you will have a CEQA document that reflects the project as it is today. It will include new comments from the public and responses from the applicant and the planning department and that's the MND that is appropriate for you to hear. And we're only asking for a little time to do that. And I thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Well, Commissioner Donovan, just a couple of questions. I mean, we, we saw that this happening last July. Why did it take so long to uh, ask for a continuance? Well, the, the 11th um, hour. Well, it took that long to, it's hard for me to answer that, is, is when the applicant was willing to do it, um, and when we looked at, and when, especially when we decided we wanted to propose the enclosure, um, that was another change. Um, and when, and frankly, when I looked at it, you know, I practiced CEQA for 20 years and I defend CEQA cases in court. And I had to look at it and I, I'm, t I'm being very candid with you. In my estimation, this MND needs to be revised and recirculated for it to be as strong and as accurate as it can be. Uh, so that I can advocate for it and that you can exercise your independent judgment. I'm sorry it took so long, um, but the timing is the timing. I can't, I can't change that. Uh, it would have been more convenient to do it earlier, um, but better to do it late than not do it at all. Uh, Commissioner Donovan, again, uh, but just to assuage concerns that I've heard that um, some might think that all you would need to do for this to revise the MND was to hire a new consultant. Say there's they've relooked at it, and problems such as parking, traffic, noise are not really a problem, and it's going to be okay. So that's the worry I think that um, some might have. Are you telling us uh, that you that the applicant is going to make substantial revisions to the project, which you said including uh, perhaps even enclosing a patio and things like that? Well, I don't know if I would characterize enclosing the patio as substantial. The patio was originally proposed as, as enclosed. Um, I'm not sure I would characterize um, the exiting out the alley as substantial, but whether it's substantial is what a secret document is supposed to determine. Um, I have every confidence that 
all, any, any potential impacts that will arise from these changes can be mitigated and that a mitigated negative declaration is still the appropriate CEQA document. That's what I expect to find, but I'm not going to predict that because that's what CEQA is supposed to do. And right now, the CEQA document doesn't make any conclusions on some of these things, and for that reason, it really should be recirculated. And, and, then, and, and that's why it needs to be recirculated with public review, not just revised and presented to you, and then the public has to read it and comment it on the same night, but they get a 20-day period or a 30-day period, whatever the city planning department wants to do, to really review it and write in comments um, and, and address the two, one, two key issues in this appeal. One is that the CEQA document is inadequate. Two is that the site plan is so in flux we don't even know what's being proposed. This solves both of those problems, not only for the appellant, but for the community and for your own body. Uh, Commissioner Donovan, again, we've received word that the appellants wish to oppose this continuance, and we've also received word from planning that, that they would uh, support a continuance of only 60 days. Is that going to be long enough to do what you need to do? I don't know. I, I heard 60 days, too, and I, I, I was hoping more than 90, but um, it, we can do it in 60 days, but I don't control how quickly the planning department reviews an MND. If they can move fast for reviewing an MND, we can move fast preparing one. Well, I, I, I'm going to suggest to, if planning says we want it in 60 days and, and they understand that a new MND is coming down the pike, pike I, I, can I would imagine they would be willing to review it on an expedited va basis. Um, yes, and the other part of the zone administrator's um, request is that they, they were suggesting 60 days, but if it's agreeable, they would go for a longer period of time. They thought 60 days was the minimum needed, and for us to do the, if we get the environmental review, it's adequate, and, and we have to review it, then we have to put in the paper, it has to be noticed, so yes, it can be done. It just depends on that, but we, if you come up with a day that's you know 90 days out, that is still fine with the zoning administrator's this, uh, direction. Well, practically speaking, if we were going to continue it, it wouldn't be continued to January 20th, 2016, so that's past uh, 60 days. Also, also, if I may interject, right. uh, President Donovan, although there's nothing illegal about circulating a secret document over the, the, the end of the year holidays, it is often uh, viewed with some suspicion because people aren't at home, they're not available to comment. Most of the time the city is hesitant, and not just this city, but many cities are hesitant to circulate a document during that time. Um, and again, there's nothing illegal about it. It can be done, but perhaps it's unwise. Well, thank you. Commissioner sure. Halper. Uh, one of the things that concerns me is that the operation as it currently exists is operating outside of the city rules and regulations. Uh, I would like to see that uh, ended as soon as possible so we get them into the system. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Wyatt stated that a date certain was 60 days in her uh, communication. Uh, I would like to stay to that 60 days if that's possible. Uh, Mr. President, uh, we'll, 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 we haven't heard from the appellant yet, but um, uh, we'll, we'll let them speak. Okay. If, if there's any further questions for the applicant representative, now's the time. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. But I guess my question is: Is that would that be okay with you guys? The 60 days? Yeah. I'm sure my client would be very happy with 60 days. I know that I and my colleagues are going to have a lot of work to do if we're going to do it in 60 days. And I would just want to add, I mean, the 60 days was just for the ZA to be present. Also, that was the minimum standard, just knowing what's going on at this current point in time. So it was also just how, so she could be here. So Commissioner Margulies, um, I have a, a question. I don't, I don't know if, if between planning and the city attorney can answer this, because this does go to a separate department. But in reading the letter of determination, it seems that, they, that the restaurant is currently, uh, the business is operating without a legal certificate of occupancy. What is the penalty? How how can a approve how can an appeal and how can a how can how can this project proceed when the current operation is not operating legally? The um, this simple point is when something is operating legally it's building safety that goes through their enforcement procedures. Someone can file for a that use to, to legalize it, or they can file for something different on the site. So we're just dealing with that, app, that application. 
And so the existing use, if it's out the frame of um, the zoning requirements, then it's building safety goes through its enforcement procedures and does the citations and notices to correction. And that's through building and safety does that. And then um, the other side is like the application in front of you is just looking at that pr proposed application and that proposed use. But there, there's no um, sort of basic platform that says that in order to consider uh, a change in use or a planning application, there's no rule there that says it has to be operating legally in order to proceed down a new path. No. Okay. There's nothing in the code that says that. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Waltz Morocco, I, I think you're referring to orders to comply, correct? Correct. Because there's a particular case I'm familiar with. Um, here's my question. Um, I know that there's orders to comply because you need to give people a chance to comply. That makes sense. But is there an end date to orders to comply? I mean, the one particular case I'm thinking of, they've gotten since March orders to comply. And it seems a little silly. And it's the same sort of feeling. There's people on Pico Boulevard who uh, about this business that said, wow, this person can be operating it open illegally. What's going on? And I said, well, there's an order to comply. Well, how long can that go on? Is there an end date? Is there two letters, three letters, six months, one year before there's a decease and stop or lock the door? Is there something? Um, I don't know the exact timing because I'd have to pull in some representatives from building safety to talk to you about that process of orders comply. And then I do know that they, it depends on the facts and the case and what's going on, you know, and then the timing for hearings. And then also because you do the notice of comply, then you go into a hearing procedure. Right. Right. So I don't know exactly all the timing and how long it can continue on. It, actually, it's a very good question that uh, Commissioner uh, Margo has brought up. It's that um, how. I mean, I understand there's variables, I get it. And there's certain things that take longer to comply with. I get that too. But there seems to me that there should be an, a, 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 an end date, a, a parameter here, where otherwise this could just go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And that doesn't seem right at all, especially for those who are complying. I agree. We, uh, just, it's, uh, I have to get building safety here to tell you what they do and how they do it and what their time frame is. I look forward to that information. All right. Can we be a bit date specific about that, given that this is likely to come back in 60 days? I mean, this question isn't going to go away and it may come up again, but can we have a, can we have a commitment that either on the December 2nd or December 16th meeting, we will have a representative from Building and Safety to answer these questions? Deputy City Attorney Amy Brothers, I just have a concern that this is something that seems to be related to this project rather than being a general question. So it, it may be more prudent to have building and safety come in on the date. Uh, if this hearing is going to be continued, that would probably make the most sense. That would be fine. That would be acceptable. But if we, Commissioner Waltz Morocco, just, just to say, if we do continue this for 90 days, and that's 90 more days of of operating, but again, I'm out of my scope. I need to hear from the building and safety. Okay, uh, we now would like to hear from our applicant uh, regarding this. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, appellant, you're absolutely right. I'm so used to talking with applicants. May I just make one quick comment? Uh, so first, not, you, there's no co co open comments on this right now. We have to hear from the appellant. She's entitled next. Thank you, good evening. Um, I have some comments and then a statement to read. I think I'll just say the comments first. Alana Morosi, appellant, on behalf of Concerned Neighbours of 320 Sunset. And this is regards the uh, it's re continuance? Yeah, it's regarding the continuance. Okay. And I'm answering some of the points that were just raised very briefly. This has been out of compliance for already one year. So just to let you know, from the day he opened, he was out of compliance operating a restaurant, not a bakery. Um, he also has stated he has no intention to comply, so that might answer your question. Um, and, and just so that you know, it has gone beyond building and safety and has had two um, criminal closed door hearings with the neighbourhood prosecutor. So that's where it's actually at. We're still waiting for compliance. So a um, couple of points just to answer um, about the MND that um, Mr. Comer was talking about. The MND was actually, um, 
it was adopted with this determination and it's been in existence since February 2014. So it has been around, around long enough for someone to realise that maybe something actually doesn't stack up, especially because we have had about five or six different uh, iterations of the site plans. So just, it sounds a bit disingenuous that it would come at the 11th hour, as you noted, President Donovan. So. And, on, and uh, Commissioner Donovan, just so I, I forgot to mention this to you, but you, so you understand, um, out of uh, respect for the appellants in this action, we're allowing comment on here, but mm -hmm. uh, the applicant can't continue this matter. The appellants cannot prevent a continuance. I just wanted to let you know the, the, your legal rights as far as that. Did you but, say the applicant can? Yes, yes. But the applicant, the time has expired for him to have that um, for him to have that privilege, uh, I the case is expired. Um, I, I think it has. I, I, I've received no information as far as it as had expired goes. at the last time we met. When we the got the time continued. to act can be extended by an applicant. Oh, it can. Yes, just at will. Yeah. Okay. So I wasn't. I, 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 I just okay. wanted to, to let, so let you know. So I'm going to read my statement. Let, let you know that. Okay. And thank you. And I, I also wanted to let you know, generally speaking. Um, I would say that it, it, the commission's default position is to allow continuances, especially when we can get a better record on this. So in what precisely I'm interested in, in is why um, you would oppose a, a relatively short continuance uh, between 60 and 90 days and how such a continuance will adversely affect uh, those that you represent. Okay. Um, one thing I do want to um, state into the record and actually query perhaps the city attorney can clarify is there any risk if we do extend this um, is it well what is the risk of it bumping up against any state law i.e are we going to time out on any of the other determinations the permit permitting streamlining act like the overall timing the cdp and the the other aspects of the case uh, Commissioner Donovan, I, I, we, we can see if the city attorney wants to chime in, but I'm not okay. aware of any adverse impact to you as appellants in this case if this matter is continued for 60 to 90 days. Okay. Uh, and if, that's, if I'm incorrect about that, but I, I've not heard or seen anything that would prejudice your rights uh, to appeal this matter. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to read a statement okay. into the record. Thank you. Uh, Honourable Planning Commission, thank you. My name is Alana Morosi. I represent Concerned Neighbours of 320 Sunset. You have a request from the applicant to continue this hearing. We, we respectfully oppose that request. You have before you an appeal that is ripe. You have before you substantial evidence in the record that we have presented, which demonstrates that the project approvals and MND must be denied. If you had any doubt about that conclusion, the applicant's November 13, 2015 letter which acknowledges that the site plan has changed and his actual admission tonight saying the site plan is so in flux that we don't know what's going on, um, that actually, the MND requires revision and recirculation, that should have removed all of your doubt. We've documented repeated violations of law by the developer applicant. As you know, an accurate, stable and finite project description is the essential prerequisite for a legally compliant CEQA review docu document. Yet this project has repeatedly morphed before our eyes, subverting the process to achieve an entirely different result from that described in the original project plans and application. It is not proper to accede to the applicant's request to continue this hearing. In fact, that makes absolutely no sense. To continue the hearing assumes that you will pause the proceedings and then at some point in the future, allow the developer to pick up where he left off midstream. However, since they are belatedly acknowledging that the project has changed and that the MND must be revised, that means that a different project will be presented, which validates the accuracy of our position and, therefore, the developer cannot be allowed to resume the current flawed process. He must go back to the beginning, which is what the law requires and what the public is entitled to. Accordingly, continuation of this hearing is not the proper procedure or outcome. Granting our appeal is what is required. Anything less will undermine the public's confidence in the integrity of the process and will frustrate the purposes of the public hearing 
and subvert the CEQA processes, to not grant the appeal and to simply allow the applicant to play for time would be to endorse the applicant's ongoing abuse of this process. As stated by the Court of Appeal in a land use decision against the City of Los Angeles, the fundamental goals of environmental review under CEQA are information, participation, mitigation and accountability. That's from Lincoln Place Tenants Association versus City of LA. Those goals can properly be furthered and the law followed only by granting the appeal before you. Please finally ensure that the law is followed and that as part of the developer's now admitted revision of the process, they really start anew and do not get to pass go and get their $200. Thank you for granting our appeal, for hearing our concerns and for restoring the public's faith in this process. Thank you. Any and questions for appellant? No. Just to wrap up, I would like to say that it's concerning to the neighbourhood that um, he does continue to be allowed to operate out of compliance and we would like to ask if there's anything that you could do as some kind of condition to expect and to um, request and demand that he doesn't that he comes into compliance because a, a year has passed already and that means it's it's going to be bedlam for us in the neighborhood over the new year and the Christmas break and uh, that might be one of the plans I don't know um, also what's concerning one more one more thing is that we are concerned with the um, the zoning administrator that is currently on it um, there seems to be some kind of issues of um, ex parte and a bit of dereliction of duty and we're wondering if there could be a change of ZA for the next um, round. Thank you. Thank you. I have, I have a question. This is Commissioner Margulies. Uh, given that uh, in our uh, discussion about uh, legal operations, permits and approvals, that this seems to be tied um, to the Building and Safety Department. Can you tell us anything about the, your, as appellants, your actions on other approvals and processes, uh, aside from, from just this case that was before us? Do you have, have you had other involvement and activity on other objections to the project with other public agencies? You mean this, pro this project, or are you talking about Current operation? Projects? The current operator, what? Of this, of 320 Sunset? Yes. Um, so you, when you say other agencies, you mean? Building and safety. Have you made formal um, complaints? We, yes. And, yes. Can you tell um, us, can you give us some detail about yes, that? Yes, I can get the exact details. We've, I've got exactly a lot. About um, 61, I think it was 61 letters um, of complaint to everyone, building and safety, a city attorney's office, uh, planning department, zoning department, um, LAPD, they were all CC'd on, I think it was, no, it was 65 complaints, individual complaints, as well as the violations that were reported, which are all there, and there were 143 photographic pieces of evidence and about 40 videos of violations. And this has been going on for a year. And do you have, uh, where are you in the, have you received feedback from Building and Safety? Is there a case open? Is there any communication between the appellant group and um, Building and Safety? Building and Safety, actually, one of the neighbours has been in contact with Building and Safety, Hubert. They, the thing is, Building and Safety, I believe, have gone as far as they can go. They've issued many violations. You can see them right here many, many, many violations and or citations. I'm, I'm not sure what you actually call them. Um, but then it, it gets to the uh, enforcement part and that has to be done with, I think, the uh, neighbourhood prosecutor. And maybe Tricia from Mike Bonin's office can speak to that because they've been involved with trying to get that to happen. And um, as I said, one of the hearings was in, I think, February, March and another one since then. And, it's been going for a year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, at this point, uh, do we have a, a representative for uh, Council District 11 here? Uh, we've already, she, uh, your opponent spoke for you on, on behalf of regarding the continuance. We're not entertaining the merits of this right now. So she she was designated to step up for you. a separate appellant or there's just two appeals on this case? Well. But he agreed to. 
I have agreed to the continuance. I just wanted to make oh, that for the record. Okay. But there are two separate appeals. She doesn't speak for me. Okay. All right. Mine are I'm completely sorry. Completely different issues. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Navi. Can we just get a name for the record, please? James Mirens. Good evening, Hi. Trisha Keen, uh, Director of Land Use and Planning for Councilmember Mike Bonin. Um, the issues that your commission was discussing regarding the ongoing violations, the outstanding, um, uh, the activity that's still happening despite the fact that there have been notices of violation issued, um, is those are concerns that the council member shares. And as Commissioner Donovan indicated, we are concerned that any further continuance of this project will just result in additional delay in getting those outstanding issues addressed. Um, unless the delay really is to allow the applicant to make meaningful and substantial changes to the project to address the concerns that have been raised throughout the process, we aren't comfortable with just granting additional time at this point for the sake of additional time because there are activities on that site that are the subject of enforcement actions that, um, as you've heard tonight, have been going on for quite some time and are not yet resolved. So we would like to see resolution to those activities um, rather than an additional delay of time until we can get to some point where there's a decision on this project that gets those um, outstanding violations rectified. It's Commissioner so, Margulies, sorry. <laughs> it's, it seems to me when we asked about the connection between the outstanding violations in this particular case, we were told by the city attorney and planning that there is no connection and we have to look at these things independently. So uh, could you clarify how the denial of a continuance um, tonight would have a direct and specific impact on the violations that have already, that are in process? While I can't speak to how the city attorney's office or building and safety, um, I, I think it's a good idea to have those, um, you know, the building and safety department and any other departments involved in enforcement provide you with direct information because certainly I can't speak on behalf of those entities. Um, but my understanding is that the building and safety department has in fact gone as far as it can through its process for enforcement. And at some point in time, if compliance is not achieved, the matter does get referred over to the neighborhood prosecutor um, and proceedings through that office are then pursued. Um, I think from our perspective, if there is, and I think you've probably heard this in the past, maybe this evening, I don't actually recall if it was mentioned, but often when there is an ongoing permit process to legalize a use, there may not always be, um, the applicant who has a pending application may not be required to change anything until there's a decision on the pending application. And I think that's a concern that we have in that as long as there's still something pending on the project site that would bring the use into compliance or condition it in a way that would, would achieve compliance, that until a decision is made on that, there may be some, the, the other enforcement actions may remain you know, sort of where they are right now, which we feel like is in, in a bit of limbo. Um, so we would like to see, we would like to see the property brought into compliance. We would, if a, condi uh, a continuance is granted, we would like to see it um, done as quickly as possible so that we can reach a resolution on this project um, and, and see that site operated in a way that works for the community. Uh, Commissioner Donovan, so we're, I think what everyone's been talking about here is, is 60 days. Is, uh, is, is that going to be acceptable to the council office? Yeah, I think we'd like to see things happen as quickly as possible. I try to be a realist and know, um, you know, having, having some CEQA background myself, I recognize that it does take some time, and certainly it takes some time for the department to review the materials that they need to review um, in order to have a sufficient document. Um, you know, I can't speak to whether that's an act a sufficient amount of time from everybody else's perspective to get the work done. We'd just certainly like to see everything happen as fast as it possibly can if, it, if the item is gonna get continued. Uh, Commissioner Dime, also, has the council office requested from Building and Safety or LAPD the material that this commission has requested? Um, I'm at a bit of a loss because I think um, you, your commission probably knows that our senior planner from our office had been handling, had been the point person on this case before, so I, I cannot speak to whether we have actually, if our office has actually requested that information. To my knowledge, we have not, um, but it, it does sound like it, 
could be informative to understand the ongoing success of operations on the site to be in compliance with conditions of approval. The commissioner, I'm out, I would also suggest that perhaps the act of the council office requesting this information for building and safety might spur other action, quicker action as well, as well as the appellants asking under a public records request. But any further questions for the council office? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to uh, close any further com public comment on the request for continuance. Um, uh, what we're talking, I guess, uh, uh, continue to probably January 20th, um, which is a little bit over 60 days, not much. How does the rest of the commission feel? <clears throat> Nobody wants to start off. I'll, 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 I'll start off as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I realize the impatience of the appellants on this, and, and they're concerned about the continued operation of uh, uh, this uh, um, bakery during this time. But we are not an enforcement body. We're an appellate body. There's nothing that we can do. And uh, if they, there have been violations uh, that are enforceable by building and safety, then uh, that can, our continuance of this matter does not would not you does not operate to stop them from continuing to enforce them or or somebody seeking an immediately stay of their operations right now before a judge and so that would stop them until this matter is determined that's one thing the second thing is that if it has been going on for some time another 60 days one way or the other why uh, still um, uh, an irritant to the appellant to say the least it's not wouldn't it seem to me that's going to cause any kind of permanent damage that we would have to address right away. Uh, the third thing is that I know that I would like to see further evidence uh, from LAPD and from Building and Safety before making a determination if it's indeed relevant and, and applicable to this case. And I would also like to have uh, um, our ZA uh, present here who's been involved in all this to, to provide us with the expertise. And finally, um, if uh, applicant is sincere and uh, and we we'll, we take him at his word and then he come back with a uh, project that's been revised to address the concerns of the community uh, at the end of the day uh, if something goes forward we will end up with something that's better uh, for the residents and for the city so uh, in my feeling an, an extra 60 days will allow uh, everyone to prepare better, it'll allow the applicant to put and do their homework, it'll allow planning to review everything, it'll allow the appellants to uh, move forward and uh, get all the information they may think they have, uh, every uh, item of uh, uh, what they consider to be abuse by this uh, applicant, but they may find they will find some more, and certainly it would be something for this commission to consider. Uh, if, when this matter came back to us, if we, if it is displayed to us that the applicant has continued to uh, um, uh, flout the law on this, uh, so uh, on that basis, um, I would, I would support a, a continuance. Commissioner Halper, uh, as a general uh, rule, I really, I, I oppose continuances because people come out from the community prepared to to uh, engage with the commission, uh, and it's an imposition on the community. In this particular instance, I'm prepared to make a motion to uh, grant a continuance for a 60-day period as uh, recommended by the planning department. Can we, I'll can make we get that, that motion if I can get a second. Yes, and can we, in that motion, can we get to a date certain. Yeah, I was just going to say, days. can I amend that motion, Commissioner Halpern, to uh, a date certain, which would be uh, Commissioner Waltz Morocco, uh, January 20th, I believe, is the day we were looking at. Correct. Then I, I would second that motion. Any further discussion? No. Okay. Can I, can I also just say one quickly? Lisa uh, Morocco, <laughs> Waltz Morocco, sorry, Commissioner Waltz Morocco. Um, where's my mind? Um, I would also like to request formally that Building and Safety be here for that meeting so we can get a firm answer on all there is to know about orders to comply and 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 how that works. Because I am troubled that someone is operating illegally for so long. That just sends a bad message and I know that's under, not under our purview here, I get it, but it just doesn't seem right. So I would really like to get the answers from the horse's mouth about how the process is 
and how how do how do you go through it and and how what's the time frame on these things? It just seems like it's never ending, especially if it's true that this has been out of compliance for so long. Yes, I've got that in my notes to turn over to the ZA to follow up on for your next hearing. Thank you. All right. James Williams, City Planning. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Halper. Aye. Commissioner Waltz Morocco. Aye. Commissioner Margulies. Aye. Commissioner Donovan. Aye. The motion carries. Okay, I know there's uh, some people that are here just for this item. We're going to take just a short five minutes to let people who need to leave leave. And also, can I just mention there was a, on the the future agenda, there was supposed to be a case called Superba, on Superba Avenue that was continued on to a date certain, and we're going to read notice, notice for that um, to that date. So it'll be a whole other public hearing notice on that. that it says, I, do, forget, I forgot to mention that during the advanced calendar. But Superba has been continued on, and we'll be sending out a new public notification. 